my bus Lock your eyes, we just touch Feel our bodies drifting up
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for the third episode of Show Cooking. My name is Emile Soubele. I'm a first year student at the Institut Paul de Bocuse. My name is Cole Millard and I'm a third year student at the Institut Paul de Bocuse. And my name is Joy and I'm also a third year student at the Institut Paul de Bocuse. So by my side, I have Cole, a third year student that came all the way to, from Canada to study and learn the French culture. I also have Joy, an international student that's an international student that is coming from Lib Liban. We are also pleased to welcome alumni and former Hungarian scholar of the French government for a special contest, contest organized by Campus France Hungary. The particular particularity of today's show is the concept. Today we will focus more on the uh, on our two alumni's experience and throughout games we will test their knowledge. Chef Cole, could you please introduce the recipe? Thank you for the introduction, Emile. Uh, so our recipe today is a ricotta nudi with uh, mushrooms and spinach. Uh, so this recipe hails from the Toscano region of Italy. Uh, and then it's called by two names. In Siena, it's called mofatti, which uh, translates to badly shaped, often involving chopped spinach in it. And then the version we're doing today is from Florence. Uh, and Joy is going to walk us through what we're cooking today. Thank you, Cole. So I'm going to be talking about the progression of the dish. So Cole here is going to start by making the dough. And it's a really simple dough. You won't need any special equipment at home. You can make it with your kids, your family, impress your friends with it. And the base of the dough is a ricotta. And you really want to get the best quality out there to have that uh, rich flavor at the end. And to that ricotta, you really want to let it drain overnight to get rid of all the excess water. So you, ha you add less flour to it. To that ricotta, we're going to add some melted butter, grated nutmeg, Parmesan cheese, an egg, and we're going to slowly incorporate the flour and mix it all together. We're going to put it in the fridge and we're going to move on to the sauce. Now for the sauce, we're going to take our mushrooms and cut them in quarters, take our garlic and cut it, slice it uh, lengthwise, and we're going to put it all together in the pan and make an emulsified butter sauce before adding our spinach. And then Cole is going to cook the nudi in the boiling water and we're going to bring everything together and finish it off with some Parmesan cheese and some lemon zest. Okay, thank you, Joy. So I'm just going to get started here. Uh, we have the uh, fresh ricotta. We've drained off any of the excess liquid that we can, uh, just so that we're adding the smallest amount of flour possible. So we have a lighter dough and a lighter nudie at the end. So I'm just adding in all of the ingredients and mixing them together, except for the flour, which I'll incorporate last. Chef Cole, about the ingredients, could you give us a brief product description? Yes, so uh, a couple, all the ingredients we're working with today are uh, fresh and in season. Uh, we got many of these from the farmer's market. Uh, the thyme we're using to perfume the sauce and flavor the sauce is from my own garden. And then the uh, Parmigiano Reggiano we're working with today is 24 months old, so uh, very nice and salty and an incredible flavor. Uh, the name Parmigiano Reggiano is made up of the different producing regions in France. And then it's aged for a minimum of 12 months. Okay. Joy, can you talk us about the recipe? Is it affordable? It is extremely affordable. Uh, altogether, it costs around 22 euros. And that's including the flour and eggs and ingredients you probably have at home. So I would say it's very affordable. And as I said before, you don't need any special equipment to make the dough. So it's uh, very easy, not time consuming and super delicious. Are all products in season? Uh, I would say they are, yes. We're using spinach. As, I, as Cole said before, we went to the farmer's market, so everything's in season and fresh. You can use different kinds of mushrooms, but we decided to go with some Paris Bouton, but you can use chanterelle and other types it's as you prefer. Joy, let's talk about your experiences. Yes. You did some internships. Where did you do your internships? I uh, completed my last internship in Montréal in Canada in a restaurant called Toque. And it's basically a uh, Quebecois gastronomy restaurant. And I never thought I would actually go there and learn about local products, but I did. And it was the best internship 
till now, I hope I have some uh, nice ones as well. But I got to learn a lot of the different products in season, uh, local products, and I got to meet a lot of um, interesting people over there. So I would recommend anyone that's willing to go there. What was the main difference between this internship and the other you did? Oh, so I'm currently doing my second year internship and the big difference is COVID, obviously. Um, because of COVID, we're only doing deliveries and I'm working at Food Traboul in Vieux Lyon. Um, it's not a lot of work. I used to work 13, 14 hours a day and now I work less, but I still get to learn some interesting things and work with some interesting people. So I'm just going to add some of our flour in. Uh, so the amount on the recipe is 68 grams, but oftentimes we'll use much less than this. Uh, we just want to incorporate the flour uh, just so it's not sticking to our hands because we're going to roll it into the small balls of the nudi. Uh, so I'm going to add about half or just over half here. And I'm going to see what the consistency of the dough looks like and then add more. Or if it's complete and uh, not too sticky, I can put it in the fridge. Mr. Cole, uh, Chef Cole, I have a question for you. So, you seem to know a lot about Italian gastronomy. Which one do you prefer, French or Italian? So my preference is definitely Italian cooking. Uh, I love fresh pasta. I love the variety across Italy from the northern, uh, the colder regions and the dumplings and the hearty food to the very uh, fresh uh, vegetable focused, uh, seafood focused. Uh, going down in the country. Uh, so I do love Italian food, uh, but I've really enjoyed my time studying here and getting to know more about French cuisine. Uh, so yeah, they're both incredible. Did you live in, uh, in Italy? I have not lived in Italy, but I've uh, visited quite a few times. And uh, I always love getting to visit and uh, explore different regions and yeah. About your internships, did you do any internships? I did. Uh, so my years? first year internship uh, was at a restaurant called I'm Sure in uh, Ireland, uh, just outside of Dublin. And it's, uh, it gained its two Michelin stars while I was working there. Oh. And it was absolutely incredible. It's a tasting menu of all Irish ingredients. Um, and uh, so about 18 courses when I was there, so complex, but very simple working with the products. And yeah, it was incredible. So um, would you recommend this restaurant? Definitely, yes. Uh, I got a lot of autonomy and I was able to move through all the stations, work with plating and uh, get a lot of fun events such as the Galliani Shuffle and uh, doing a collaboration dinner with Mayamo. And how is the chef of this restaurant? Uh, so the chef's is incredible, Jordan uh, Bailey. He was working at Mayamo when I got its three stars. And then this is his uh, venture with his wife, Mikan. Uh, so it's really just incredible to be working with a young team. Uh, so this dough here has just come together. It's not sticking to my fingers and I've just lightly floured the bowl. So I'm gonna put it in the fridge while Joy takes us through uh, cleaning our mushrooms and chopping our garlic. Nice. Go ahead. So. About Institut Paul Bocuse, the main question I have for you, Mr. Cole, yep. is why did you choose Institut Paul Bocuse? So why did I choose Institut Paul Bocuse? Uh, I really wanted an international program. I wanted to get the advantage of having a bachelor's degree, uh, working with a multinational class, so people from all over the world and benefiting from uh, their experiences and opinions and their knowledge. And I believe I've been able to do that. And then working in both uh, pastry service and uh, culinary applications to get a well-rounded experience and get incredible uh, internship opportunities across the world. So it's mainly for the opportunities and the reputation of the Institut Paul Bocuse. Yes, and I'd say we have an exceptional team here, a team of MOFs, uh, very highly skilled teachers. So benefiting from that and also the name of the school and the reputation it's built. And about your bachelor, Joy. Yes. Do you have some advantages and disadvantages? Um, if they also tell us. Honestly, uh, since I speak French and English, I've decided to go into the international program because I thought it would open up a lot of offers and to be more uh, comfortable in English speaking environments. And especially, I, I, I would say the biggest advantage is being in a class full of 
people, very interesting people coming from all over the world with different age range. So you get to learn a lot, a lot of everyone's different culture. <laughs> and um, I think that's very interesting. So I'm very happy I chose this program and I love my class and yes. Nice. So what are you doing with the mushrooms? So for the mushrooms, we want to clean them with a damp paper towel. And you don't want to soak them in water. And that's very important because if you soak them in water, the mushroom will absorb the wa water. And once you put them in hot oil, it will create a very dangerous reaction where you can injure yourself. Plus, if the mushroom absorbs all of the water, it will steam instead of sear. And that's not what we're looking for since we're looking for a caramelized outcome. So you just take a damp paper towel and just gently rub all of the excess dirt from the mushroom. OK. All right, all right, all right. Mr. Cole, could you give us a um, resume of what we're doing now uh, about the recipe? Uh, where so where we we're at in the recipe? Uh, so we're just completing our uh, mise en place, really. We are cleaning the mushrooms, getting them prepared for the sauce, so that when we have shaped our nudie, which is the next step after Joy finishes here, uh, we're going to be shaping it and putting it back in the fridge just to firm up a little bit uh, before we cook it. Uh, just so that everything will be ready at the same time. We're ready in all the different stages from the pasta to the sauce that we're going to go uh, work with here. Uh, so everything can come together at the same time and uh, we can clear our station down as we go. Nice. We have a question from Tracy Thompson. How do you ensure that the dough isn't too heavy dense? Okay, so to ensure that it's not too heavy and dense, it's really about adding the minimum amount of flour. So just as soon as it stops sticking to your fingertips, uh, and you can roll it around with one hand. Uh, that's kind of what you're looking for. It's going to uh, be rolled in the semolina. So even if it's a little bit water of a dough, then you'll find with gnocchi uh, made with potato, which is much firmer, that's okay because it's going to encapsulate and that semolina will help seal it while it cooks. You talked about your best internships. Do you have some bad moments you lived during your internships? I, I wouldn't say bad moments. I'd say everything was a learning experience and uh, I've learned what to do, what not to do, and uh, it's only benefited me as a cook and as a person. Uh, so I wouldn't say anything is negative inherently. I've enjoyed everything and uh, it's got me to where I am today. What is the biggest lesson you learned throughout your internships? Biggest lesson I've learned, I would say, working at I'm Sure, just uh, the respect of the team, working in an environment where you're striving for perfection, you're chasing three Michelin stars, but you're not yelling, you're not abusing your staff. Uh, so just being able to value their inputs, having Friday night projects to get creative input and to be able to value them as a team member and really building them up instead of kind of the oppressive uh, mentalities of some of the kitchens of the past. Uh, so I think that was very valuable for me and is closely related to what I want to create in my kitchen in the future. Do you have a project? You talked about a kitchen in the future. Do you have already an idea of what it will be like? Yeah, so I have, uh, I have a general idea. I'm pretty open to change as things are constantly changing as, we, as we've seen with the COVID pandemic. Uh, but my goal has always been to study and learn with the best teachers possible uh, throughout the world. So Mexico, Italy, getting a varied uh, knowledge, being able to learn about different ingredients and getting exposure to different uh, cuisines and cultures. And then really taking that, and my goal is to open my own restaurant uh, to pursue three Michelin stars. That's always been the goal. And then in time to look at opening a uh, restaurant group and to expanding that and where I can take it from there. Okay. What did you do with the mushroom, Joy? So I, I cleaned the, all of the mushroom and I removed the end of the stem so that it's nice and even. Um, you can remove all of the stem, but you know, it's a waste-free dish, so I would uh, suggest you do not. So we just remove the bottom so that it's eat nice and even. Now I'm just gonna cut them in quarters and we can move on to the sauce. Okay, perfect. <laughs> yes, uh, I think it's very important to learn the right way of doing the mushrooms, especially since it can lead to a dangerous outcome. Uh, so you're welcome. <laughs> so for the mushrooms, you just want to take them and cut them in quarters. So cut the mushroom in half and cut the half in half. Why is it so important to cut it like that? 
Um, that's a very not important question. Thank you for asking it. Uh, you cut them in quarters, first of all, because it is easier to place them in the pan and so that they're nice and even and stable so that they don't wobble around because we're actually really looking for a caramelized outcome. And the second reason is because it is easier when it comes to plating the dish uh, to, distri to di distribute it evenly in the uh, different plating dishes. So that's why we're cutting them in quarters. And how are you going to caramelize it? We're just going to put some really hot olive oil in the pan and just put them on that even side and just let them do their own thing without moving them a lot. Okay. Chef Ko, what are the next steps of this recipe? So the next steps, after Joy has finished uh, prepping here and cutting both our mushrooms and our garlic, I will be taking the dough from the fridge and I'm going to be portioning them uh, and then rolling them in the semolina to prepare them for cooking. Why do you roll them in the semolina? So rolling them in the semolina, uh, so you have uh, nudi, which is basically a naked ravioli because it doesn't have the typical pasta sheet, it has the ricotta filling. So by rolling it in the semolina, especially for the wetter doughs, uh, that's not completely firm and saturated with flour, it's really going to help create a film and create a layer when it's cooking, uh, so it doesn't explode and it doesn't ooze out, uh, so it keeps the uniform shape. Okay. I've actually never heard of uh, the dish nudi. It's actually actually cool that introduced me to it and I've already did it at home for my family and I think it's a very interesting way of uh, plating the dish and cooking it. So thank you, Cole. <laughs> We've got a question from Re Veronica. What's the difference between kosher salt and regular table salt? So um, just like with regular table salt, you have some iodized salts, so you have a lot less flavor. It's super refined um, and fine. Uh, so it is giving you the salts, but it's uh, a lot less flavor than you might find, and it's not textural like you get from a, like a Malden salt or a coarser salt, uh, where you kind of get that textural bite when you add it to the food. Uh, it's going to incorporate right in, and it's very easy to mix into the dish. Um, yeah. So just iodized opposed to being natural salt, and you have some difference in flavor and the texture of the grains. Okay. Joy, I have a question for you. Yes. So Cole's goal is to get three Michelin star. Do you have a similar goal? I do not have a similar, similar goal. Uh, for me, the, my goal is not to get stars at the moment. I don't think it's what I'm looking for. It might change in the future with the experience I get. But for me, it's really to travel. <laughs> to travel uh, all over the world and try to experience as much, learn from different cultures, people, before opening my own restaurant. And I think it's going to be like a bistronomic, small restaurant on the beach. I think we had a plan with my dad when he retires to open a restaurant in Mykonos. So I hope it's, oh, nice. uh, I hope, I hope it will happen. Okay. So I'm moving on to the garlic. You want to cut it in half so that it's easier to slice it lengthwise and you want to remove the germ from it. Why do we remove the germ? Um, because it is, uh, if you remove the germ, it's easier to digest it uh, and it's less bitter. It depends on the maturity of the garlic, but uh, yeah, it, it, it could be less, uh, less uh, powerful. Chef Cole, I see that there's boiling water since the beginning of the video, what are we going to use it for? So the boiling water, uh, we're going to heavily salt it uh, to set up our pasta water, and then we are going to cook the gnocchi in it for a period of four minutes. Okay. The uh, nudi, yes. Okay. Perfect. Coming back to your dreams and what you want to do in the future. Yes. Do you have an inspiration for those dreams? A chef you recognize, a chef you love? Um, I look up to many great chefs uh, that have inspired kind of um, how I do things in the kitchen and uh, that I aspire to uh, learn lessons from. Um, so Heston Blumenthal, a lot of local Calgary chefs that have helped me start my career. So John Michael McNeil, uh, Connie D'Souza, uh, really great chefs from Calgary, uh, but really th I believe things are going to change over time and uh, as things go by I'll kind of build my culinary vision. I'm not too set on it right now. Okay. 
So what you want to build is your culinary vision and how you view the culinary world. Yeah, just grow my knowledge and uh, develop a more all-around uh, understanding and work under a bunch of different chefs that work different ways and have different visions for their menu uh, to kind of build my own. So to your goal after leaving the Institut Paul Bocuse is to travel mainly, to see different culture, to see different... Yes, to, uh, definitely to travel, to uh, go to different areas of the world and work for different chefs and spending enough time in the kitchens to work through the different stations and to develop a full understanding and then moving and kind of building that experience across multiple locations. What will be the first country you'll travel to? Uh, it's hard to say. It's, uh, <laughs> as a Canadian, it's very dependent on uh, what visa uh, opportunities <laughs> are available. Uh, <laughs> but Sweden, Italy, um, all offer incredible opportunities, so I think it's just going to be in my final year I'll see the opportunities available and then make the decision from there. Perfect. Joy, can we come back to your internship? Yes. Because you talked about the first one, but not the other ones. Could you enlighten us on this subject? Of course. Uh, before coming to the Institute, since my program started in February, I had a lot of free time, so I completed two internships in Lebanon, um, one in an Italian restaurant and the other one in an international restaurant. But I wouldn't compare it to the internships I've had here and in Canada because uh, I was still very young and I wasn't really learning as much as I am here. So I would say it really helped me to really be in the kitchen environment and be comfortable where I am. But I learned a lot from uh, my last internship and the one here more than the ones I did before coming to the Institute. Chef Cole, I want to know, how did your passion for cooking develop? Uh, so my passion for cooking, uh, definitely when I was younger, six, seven, eight, cooking a lot in the kitchen, uh, being very interested in food and pastry. Um, one of the chefs that inspired me the most would be Wolfgang Puck. Uh, so I was very inspired by him at the beginning, working my way through his cookbook and then branching out from there, getting more opportunities, doing some internships in Canada and uh, in North America and building it from there. What was special about his cookbooks? So Wolfgang Puck, uh, just um, it's inspired because uh, it's very simple. Uh, he came from Europe, working in some of uh, Europe's top kitchens, and then he's also uh, kind of embodied a chef entrepreneur. So really building his brand to multiple locations, uh, focusing on quality, so he still has his flagship uh, Spago. He's catering the Oscars, so he's really managed to build his brand quite a bit, uh, but really stayed true to the chef that he is. So uh, with that knowledge, you liked as much the managing part of cooking and the culinary part. Yes, I think both are important Practice. and uh, it's good to learn the all around nature of the business. So now that I've cut all of the ingredients, Cole will show us how to form the nudies and then we're going to cook the sauce and show you everything how it's done. Yes, so we're doing about half an ounce portions, uh, so just tiny little balls of the nudie mixture like this, uh, so just about the size of a small golf ball, a little smaller than a golf ball, and this is going to give us about 15 or 16. So this could serve two to three main people, uh, two to three people as a main, or it could uh, serve multiple plates as a starter, first course um, in Italian cooking uh, to begin the meal, followed by meat or fish, as is traditional uh, in Italian cooking. So you just cover them with the, with this, okay. Perfect. Yeah, so just covering them in the semolina, making sure they're coated all the way around uh, so that they are uh, fully coated for when they're immersed in the boiling water. So that they don't stick to each other. Do you have some advices for the people that are watching us? Some advices on the nudie? On, on, on the, the nudie and on uh, culinary practice in general. If you want to go to the IPB, what should you do? 
Okay, uh, so related to the nudie, um, it's going to be quite a bit of a wet dough compared to what you're used to working with gnocchi, which is made with uh, starchy potato. Uh, so it is going to stick to your hands a little bit, uh, but as long as you can form it into a ball and get it coated in the ricotta, that's what you're looking for. So no worries if it's sticking a little bit. Uh, we'll just wash our hands right after this, nothing to worry about. And that is what you're looking for. You don't want it to be fully saturated to where uh, it's not sticky at all. Uh, because then you're going to have a tougher nudie. Uh, as far as uh, studying at the Institute Paul Bocuse and what I'd recommend uh, for people looking to do it, um, if you're looking for a bachelor's degree, something that you can continue on uh, through post-secondary and you want to uh, benefit from kind of a multifaceted uh, educational approach, learning the service, learning uh, beverage, getting demos, uh, and working through several of the training kitchens, then it's a great opportunity. Um, yeah, so anybody that has an interest in uh, culinary professionally or in pastry, uh, it's definitely something to look into. Enjoy. The Do you school, have so many advices? Yes, the school offers a lot of programs and uh, suitable for everyone. And I think uh, Institute Paul Bocuse offers a lot to their students. Uh, with the events in third year, you will get to create your own concept restaurant. And that's very interesting because you will literally have an empty place and you, you will have to build a restaurant from it. So uh, the ingredients, the menu, the design of it all, it's super interesting. I haven't done it yet, but uh, I'm going to do it soon. I'm excited for it. Joy? Yes. Let's talk about your integration into the school. Was it easy? Was it difficult to find a place to live in? Was it? Um, in the first years, I lived at the uh, student residence, the Clipper, and I would say it was a really fun experience. Uh, we got to meet a lot of different people, hang out with them, have barbecues every now and then. So I wouldn't say it was difficult to integrate into the class itself and to friends. Uh, for me, it was a very easy experience. Um, so. Yeah, I just wanted to say a big thank you to everyone watching from Lebanon. I love you all and I miss you so much. Thank you. <laughs> how about you, Cole? Your integration or how is My it? My integration? Uh, so it's been uh, quite good for me uh, for the most part. Uh, very different from Canada, so I've appreciated that. It's quite a different experience. Uh, but like Joy, I also lived in the Clipper, which is a really great way to get integrated and meet people quickly. Um, and then from there, getting an apartment, exploring more of Lyon and more of France. Uh, it's been great and uh, yeah, it's been incredible for me. And so you want to grab yourself a big saute pan. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You want to grab yourself a big saute pan and heat it to a medium heat so that it's nice and hot. And to make sure that it's hot, just take some water in your hands and splash it into the pan. And if it sizzles, that means it's nice and ready. And once you've had all, your, uh, all of your ingredients cut and ready to go, you can now add the olive oil to the pan and not add it before because it will uh, smoke too much where a point where it will change the flavor of the dish. So now that we have our pan with the olive oil in it, we can start by putting the mushrooms in with the even side on the pan so that it gets nice, a uh, nice color, color and caramelization. And just to add on that, uh, when you put the nudie back in the fridge, just to firm them up a little bit before cooking, uh, you want them to be separated so they're not touching each other, so they don't stick. Um, and yeah, we'll uh, just set those aside in the fridge while we wait for our mushrooms and our sauce to come together. And then when we add the spinach, we'll be able to take these out and begin cooking the pasta. And it's very important to get yourself a big saute pan because you will put all of the ingredients inside, even the nudies. And if it's too crowded, it will steam and not sear. Uh. Chef Ko. Yes. I have a question for you again. Yep. So uh, for those who aren't at the Institut Paul Bocuse, could you please explain us what a typical day is for uh, practice and theoretical? Yeah, so there really is no typical day per se because you're changing quite a bit. Uh, your theory classes will look different. Uh, your practical classes will look different as you're doing uh, different uh, kind of specials. So focus, like a week focused on meat, a week focused on fish, or you may be in an application restaurant such as Saison, you may be in uh, Nomos. 
Uh, so it's really changing quite a bit, so you get a well-rounded opportunity to explore all the different areas of the school. Um, so pretty full-on intensive uh, days, so multiple hours of whether it be academic classes or spending an eight-hour block uh, doing an academic, uh, doing a cooking class, and then having an exam at the end uh, to test your knowledge. So we got a question on why we don't just throw the mushrooms inside and just cook it and why do we place it one by one and that's because we first of all we cut them in quarters so uh, you want to put the even side on the pan so that it gets a nice and caramelized color and you want to get an even caramelized color on each side so we're going to be turning them and that's why we just don't throw them in in the pan so we have control over the uh, color of each mushroom as your third year students uh, you went to all the different restaurants at Institut Paul Bocuse which one did you like the most? Oh, that's, that's an easy question. My favorite one was the restaurant experience. It was such an amazing time. My team was amazing. The chef was amazing. And each week you got to do a different menu. So we got to change the menu each week, uh, depending on the concept. So that was very interesting. And so that's, that's an easy question for me, I would say. <laughs> and what is the, the concept between the behind the, the restaurant experience? Well, experience, it depends on the week. We, we had gastronomy week, we had uh, catering, oh, yeah. catering, catering week where you create your own uh, amuse-bouche and present them to the public. Uh, what else did we have? Um, we went through bistronomics, so different, different yes. Kind. And th yeah. the cool thing about that is that the restaurant, the layout of the restaurant changes with the concept of the menu. So if it's a bistronomique, the, we played it differently, we put the tables differently in, in, the, in the restaurant, so that was very interesting. How about you, Cole? Uh, so I was actually in Joy's group uh, for the experience uh, part of this year. What? And yeah. Finish your Oops. sentence. Go ahead. Yes. Um, so I was with Joy, so we worked through the four different rotations alongside having the art project where we were inspired by pieces of artwork in the restaurant to create a canapé tasting uh, for students and uh, guests. Uh, so really working through different types of restaurants, being able to work as a chef uh, and being able to lead a team in that environment. Uh, so I really enjoyed it. It was a great way to put the skills we learned in internship and then translate them into the practical kitchen. Isn't it a big amount of responsibilities? It is, and that's really the goal here, the increasing responsibility from learning the basic techniques and uh, ingredients in your first year and then building on being a leader and leading a team, having more responsibility, having your own prep and your own station, uh, and then going into third year, working at the higher end restaurant, Saison, and spell core, and then being a very well-rounded cook by the time you get there. Have a, I have a question for you. What for me? Why did you choose the Institute for Mocuse? You asked us the question, but we didn't ask you the question. Uh, I chose the Institute for Mocuse because I visited the whole, um, the whole establishment, and I talked with Florent Boivin, mm -hmm. and we, that talk with Florent Boivin really motivated me uh, to go to uh, to the Institut Paul Bocuse. And you like it so far since you're in first year? Uh, yes. What have you done? Yes, I love it. I I went to FNB. Okay. Uh, which is um, the the canteen of the Institut Paul Bocuse, and then uh, I went. I had pastry class. I had a practice class about cooking, about everything. Yeah, it's super interesting. You get to really try out different things at the Institute. Like once we had bar week where you got to make coffee and cocktails, you also get to do service, so you get to serve the clients to learn about the art of plating, art of the table, so I think it's, it's super interesting. We have a question from the chat. Yes. If we don't have olive oil, can we use another type? Uh, preferably, Olive oil is the best, but you can use... Uh, use a neutral oil, so yeah. grapeseed, uh, which will have an even higher smoke point, which works quite well when cooking the mushrooms on a high heat and searing them off. Uh, something that doesn't have a lot of flavor. We want the olive oil flavor, uh, but if we don't have that, probably neutral is the way to go, and we'll allow the mushrooms, the garlic, the thyme to season the sauce for us, uh, just so we don't have any unwanted flavors. 
So now I'm just turning the mushrooms to the other side so that it get a, a nice and even caramelization. All right. What are we going to do next on the recipe, so Chef Cole? So Joy is just making the sauce now. So as soon as the mushrooms are nice and caramelized, we are decreasing the heat, uh, adding the thyme and the garlic, and then adding butter and fresh water to emulsify the sauce. And then we are going to go into cooking our pasta. What about the spinach? So the spinach, uh, the spinach is just wilted in after we form the emulsification. We're just wilting it down a little bit. And then we're going to finish cooking it when we add the nudie in. Uh, and emulsify the final finishing olive oil. Okay. Now, as you can see, you, you're getting a nice color to the mushrooms, and it brings out a nice flavor to the mushrooms. And when we're going to add the garlic and the thyme, it will uh, give a lot of flavor to the oil. So that's what we're looking for. Just trying to... Why are we col looking for the color in the mushrooms? To really bring out that caramelized flavor to it even though we're going to be putting butter and oil and water in it it will still bring out that strong mushroom flavor yeah and you want uh, you also want the maillard reaction so you want to seal it and lock it in the uh, the juices uh, to really get that's where you're getting a lot of the flavor from the caramelization okay <laughs> um I, I actually never been in front of a camera before so that's a first experience for me, unlike my colleague Cole, yes. uh, <laughs> who is very comfortable in front of a camera. <laughs> yes, uh, fortunately I've had opportunities. I've competed on the CHOP Canada Teen Tournament in Canada, along with a couple uh, media opportunities uh, with the news and in high school. And how was it? Uh, it was incredible. Uh, so Chopped was unlike anything I've ever done before, traveling to Toronto, cooking with uh, young cooks from across the country. So really great to meet them and then be put into a competition setting, uh, be able to test my skills and be judged by some of the best chefs in Canada. Uh, so it was really incredible. I'm very happy I did it and uh, I learned a lot from it. What did you learn and how did the competition go? So what did I learn? Uh, I think really it was just... Um, being able to work under the pressure, working with 115 people on the crew, so lots of people around you, and 17, 19 cameras in your face, uh, having people follow you around uh, to ask you questions. So just being comfortable with that. Um, and now that's prepared me a lot for doing cooking demos and to demonstrating uh, for guests. Um, so yeah. Um, somebody asked, what is the tool I'm using to turn the mushroom with? I'm using a pair of tweezers. And you can use that because you have, uh, it's easier to turn each mushroom instead of just flipping them with a spoon or a spatula and just, you wanna really take care of the product you're using to get the best outcome. Yes, but uh, recognizing that many of our home cooks joining us today might not have plating tweezers, it might not often come in, uh, in need in your home kitchen. Uh, you can use the end of a spoon, you can use a spatula, whatever works for you. Uh, we're just trying to not uh, move the mushrooms around too much, just getting them nice and caramelized. Uh, and the plating tweezers allow us to have a great deal of control over them. So that's why we're using it. I have another question for you, Cole. So did you win this competition? Because I didn't, that's important. I did not. Uh, I came, cool. I got into the second round uh, with main courses and I was chopped in that round. Oh. Uh, so that's just how it worked out on the competition day. Uh, but. Uh, even not winning has inspired me more. I want to definitely compete again and to test myself more and uh, come back and hopefully try to win a competition. Uh, so it was a great learning opportunity regardless. Okay. So um, now that the mushrooms are nice and caramelized, we can add the garlic. Uh, the important thing is to not burn them because it, they burn easily. So either turn down the, the heat or just remove your pan from the heat so you can add the garlic Cook it for 30 seconds to one minute and add the time with it. Coming back to that competition, what lessons did you get from competing like that? So like as I was mentioning, uh, so just the exposure to cameras, the exposure to a TV crew, I think that was a really great learning opportunity. And then working on your feet, uh, Chopped gives you four mystery ingredients and then you have a pantry to work with and you're really transforming the dish within 30 minutes into something for the judges. So four different plates in 30 minutes with ingredients you don't know beforehand. So that's a really great challenge. 
Uh, so just being spontaneous, being creative on your feet. Uh, so those are all lessons I learned from that opportunity. So to finish on that part, uh, what did you cook? And what so, were those four mysterious ingredients? What did I cook? This has taken me a couple of years ago, I believe six years ago, since I did this competition. Uh, we had, in the appetizer round, I believe, we had wild boar sausage, we had popcorn, we had mushrooms, and uh, I'm blanking on the last one, but it was, uh, it was quite, <laughs> uh, quite a new thing. I've never cooked with boar before that, so it was really interesting to get to work with it. Um, I believe we had blue cheese. Blue cheese was the fourth one. Uh, and then going into the main round, we had uh, uh, poussin, which is uh, like the type of game, kind of smaller than a chicken, uh, a little bit of tricky cooking, um, and then some other accompaniments. Uh, so that was quite tricky. That was the round that I got chopped on, uh, but I'd never worked with it before, so it was great getting to learn how to work with it and butcher it. Okay. So you want to make sure that the garlic does not turn brown or get a color because it will change the flavor of the dish. No worries if it happens, but to prevent it from happening, just move the pan off the heat. Uh, we're cooking the, we were cooking the mushroom at a medium high heat. And once we added the garlic, we've lowered down to a, a mm, but a low, a so low, a low heat, uh, yes medium low heat. Uh, we just really don't want to burn that garlic. If it browns or uh, burns, we're getting a very uh, bitter taste. It's going to overpower the sauce, which is not what we're looking for. We're looking to perfume it, get the aroma and to flavor the oil and the sauce that we're making. So that's why we take it back down to low so we're not burning it on contact as we've been cooking the mushrooms at a very high heat to caramelize them. And now I've added the butter and we're going to let it melt before adding the fresh water. And why we're adding fresh water instead of uh, the pasta water is because the pasta water is heavily salted and you want to have control over the flavor of the dish. So we're going to be adding the salt now. Yes, we can be getting to add uh, the salt. So quite salty, so kind of like a mild uh, sea water. Uh, we didn't add salt to the nudie, although it does have the uh, Parmesan as saltiness. Uh, so usually about one a uh, tablespoon per quart of water. Uh, so just really nice and salty. It's gonna help flavor the pasta. Uh, but as I mentioned, we're using fresh water uh, because it's gonna concentrate and we don't want it to be overly salty. Thank Chef Cohn, uh, how uh, do you imagine yourself in five years? So in five years, uh, definitely working internationally, I'd like to begin to increase my responsibility working in management roles. So whether that be a junior sous chef, uh, depending on where I am, um, and just being able to build from there. So maybe working in Italy, maybe working in Mexico, uh, kind of getting some leadership experience and building from there. How about you, Joy? Thank you, Mark, for this question. Um, I see myself just traveling anywhere. Uh, I want to be out of my comfort zone every time, uh, try to learn different things from uh, in interesting people. I, wanna, I really want to go to Colombia to learn about the culture over there, maybe go to Asia as well. It depends where I'm feeling, where I want to go, I'll go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, blue cheese. Yes. Uh, Cole, yes. I have a question for you. Okay. So you're Canadian. Yes. Do you have some Canadian recipes or Canadian... Canadian recipes. Restaurants uh, that you... So aside from the poutine people <laughs> usually think of and the beaver tail pastry, uh, I think a lot of Canadian cooking is actually indigenous cooking, so the berries, the game meats, uh, stuff that you might not uh, know. Um, but really what they're cooking, uh, the indigenous people that were there in Canada before, uh, using berries in cooking. Uh, some restaurants really highlight that in Canada. Uh, but I would say that's really Canadian cuisine. And then of course, uh, it'd be hard to argue that poutine doesn't make its way in there and dishes commonly associated. Poutine is a classic. <laughs> Indeed. How about you, Joy? What Do you have some Lebanese recipe oh. that you want to share with the public? Lebanese cuisine is the best cuisine in my opinion. Uh, <laughs> honestly, it's amazing. Not just the cuisine, but the culture itself. And when you're eating at a family dinner on a Sunday, it goes from, let's say, w 1 till 5 p.m. And the whole family is there and everyone sleeps afterwards because they've eaten so much food. Be <coughs> Sorry, because we have the... Uh, cold meze, hot meze, we have the mashewe, which is like the, the meat, and then we have the desserts, which is insane, and I miss it so much. So I would say a real tabbouleh, if you haven't tried it yet, not the ones you buy from Carrefour, because <laughs> those are not real tabbouleh. <laughs> and just 
fresh hummus. <laughs> I just want to say again a big thank you to my family and I miss you all so much. So thank you for watching. <laughs> no problem. So now we're just trying to get an emulsified sauce with the butter, the water, and we're going to add a bit of oil before adding the, the no, no oil now, sorry. <laughs> we're going to mix it. Okay. Before adding the spinach in. Once she's done, yes. what are we going to do? So uh, we're just waiting for that sauce to come together uh, before we add the spinach in. And we're going to wilt that spinach just barely. So when you see it's wilting and it's cooking down, it'll reduce heavily in its volume there. Uh, then the sauce will be finished. And we're just going to take it off the heat and start cooking the nudie. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to add the spinach now. And it may seem like a lot of, thank you, Spencer, we miss you so much. <laughs> Can't wait to see you. <laughs> it may seem like a lot of spinach, but it will wilt down and don't Reduces worry. Reduces in volume quite a bit. Yes. And then for the sauce, you're going to filter it or? No, it's uh, what we want with this recipe. And uh, in Tuscany, it's really quite rustic. So traditionally, it's served with brown butter and sage or a tomato sugo, the tomato sauce. Uh, so it's not refined. We're not pureeing it and creating a very uh, delicate uh, fine dining dish. It's much more rustic. As I said, malfati translates to uh, roughly shaped, so homemade. Uh, so really, we want the texture of the mushrooms uh, and the sauce. And it really just works well together as a dish. Uh, to give us all those different flavors. On all the recipes you could have done, why did you choose that one? Why did I choose this dish? Uh, I love making pasta, but a lot of it is very time consuming. With uh, any type of sheet pasta, you're having to rest that uh, quite substantially, and it takes uh, a bit of like effort. You're having to knead it uh, quite a bit and rest it. Uh, so it is fairly time consuming. And then with uh, potato gnocchi, you're having to bake the potato. You're having to peel it while it's hot, uh, which is uh, not the easiest thing to work with for people doing it on their first time. So doing the nudie is really quite approachable. It's uh, for the home cooks and uh, students that want to give it a try. And it's very approachable, so that's why I've chosen this dish. Okay. Could you talk about a bit about the Canad your Canadian culture? Canadian culture? <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I've got to say, um, Canada's only into a couple hundred years compared to France and Europe. So. Uh, a lot of our culture, I'd say, you'd find from, uh, like, of course, the indigenous people, uh, what they have carried through, and then uh, French Canadian and Quebec, and uh, it's quite a different space and atmosphere there than you'll find in the rest of Canada. Um, yeah, so just it varies quite a bit from province to province, uh, but just uh, very welcoming, very communal uh, place and uh, friendly people, and I absolutely love it there. Miss home, uh, so thank you to all my family and friends tuning in today. Uh, but yeah, it's just, uh, it's an incredible place to live and to grow up and to learn. And where do you come from in Canada? Which province? I come from Alberta, uh, so the mountainous area, lots of skiing there. People may know Moraine Lake. That's probably our famous uh, site, um, along with the Calgary Stampede. Uh, so it does really bring in that Western uh, culture, I guess you could say, uh, to Calgary. Uh, so yeah, growing up in the mountains was really quite nice. Okay. What about you, Emil? Where are you from and what's your cuisine like? I was born in Haiti, <laughs> but um, I'm French. I was adopted. And my type of cuisine, I don't really have a, a type of cuisine. I just, it depends on my moods Spence. and it depends mostly also on what I want to eat. Cool. <laughs> Should be like that. Great, so we're just putting in our uh, nudie now. So just gently lowering them in. And then we're setting a timer for four minutes at home. And in the final minute of our cooking, the last minute of cooking, we're gonna bring our sauce back onto the heat on high, just to bring it up to a simmer so we can start to coat our nudie. I have a very important question for you, Joy. Yes. So you did various internships. Uh, did you find any type of discrimination because you were a woman or something like that? Uh, not because I was a woman, but because I was from Lebanon. I used to get some comments, but it will happen in every chef's life you, um, to get that hard attitude in front of you and you just have to learn to 
deal with it and honestly it makes it made me who I am now you know it it, it was like a small comment but still it, uh, it builds you up for the future in the kitchen and you will always get somebody that's against you or, or will look for things to be against you so you okay. need to have a strong um, personality in the kitchen so yeah <laughs> Talking about also the kitchen and what happens in the kitchen, is there often fights in the kitchen or...? I wouldn't say fights, but... Uh, Disagreements? No, not from my personal experience, I wouldn't say so. Uh, because we're all cooking for one goal. That's true, we will make things change, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> And no, I wouldn't say in the Institute Publicus that I've uh, come across for some fighting or anything like that. And even in other kitchens in my previous internships. Have you, Cole? Uh, so for me personally, uh, just to, uh, to what Joy was saying, I do think it's changing. Uh, as I said with I'm Sure, how the environment was different, respecting the staff, not yelling in the environment, creating somewhere that you want to go to work, mm -hmm. and a very uh, progressive and uh, welcoming environment for the team, which I think really translates to the food and having uh, good work-life balance and all of that. So I think it is moving towards that direction. I think people are standing up for themselves and that is becoming a culture of the past. It's not acceptable anymore. Uh, so although it is quite intense, uh, you are cooking uh, with very high standards. I think it's moving more towards empowering your staff and training them um, <laughs> rather than just being uh, threatening and having an environment of fear. And how, is, how important is the planet and the ecosystem for the cooking? Do you choose your products? Oh, you it, yes, for sure. You always want to go. Farmers, always, you? always. And it, I think it's becoming more important nowadays. I've, I think Cole and I uh, have done a project about a uh, zero plastic, no waste uh, restaurant in Berlin. And Cole did it on another restaurant also. In uh, so London, yes. In London. So it's becoming a trend. And I think it's very important to follow the trends, especially this one, since uh, it is important for our planet to use local products, uh, to try to use the waste in other ways to make some pesto or, or all of that. So I think it's very important to... How about you, Cole? Uh, so we're just heading into the last minute of cooking here. So we're about to add our nudie and then Joy is just going to finish off our sauce for us here and we are going to plate the dish. Okay, perfect. Sounds and your good. question was? Yeah, about the environment. What do you, what's your About position? the environment and being, yes, uh, so I think it's absolutely necessary uh, given the state of the world, uh, the uh, necessity of sustainability, the necessity of knowing where things are coming from, creating a relationship with your farmer, uh, which helps with sustainability along with delivering the best possible product uh, to your guests and to the people you're cooking for, even if you're at home. Uh, so. I think it's an absolute necessity uh, here at the school we're learning about it and I think there's a lot of attempts to reach out to the public to educate them on the matter uh, and that's really the way we're moving because uh, that's it's something that will need to change it's necessary and I think that's where we're headed there was a question for me asking if I cook often so I do just this morning I was cooking in a pastry with my chef uh, Vincent Durand who is a meilleur ouvrier de France? Mm. I've heard a lot of great things about him. He's very nice. He's amazing. <laughs> yes. I haven't cooked with him, but I've heard a lot of good things about him. What are the chefs that you look forward the most cooking with? At the Institute? Or famous? At the Institute. Whatever. Uh, At the Institute or any chef? My inspiration would be Anthony Bourdin, I would say, because of his adventurous side. Um, he really looks uh, to learn about not only the food but the culture and the people itself. So I think that's very interesting and that's how I want to be. Um, yeah. uh, so we just have a question in how long uh, did the nudie take to boil? So it was in for about four minutes. Uh, but depending on the size, you're going to be uh, cooked a little bit f before, uh, but usually for half an ounce, uh, four minutes will be the right timing. And then we're just finishing off it on the salt, it off in the sauce as it. Uh, kind of emulsifies and uh, coats the different nudie and just finishing off that sauce, uh, it's gonna to continue to cook a little bit further. Uh, so that's generally the timing, uh, but it may vary if they're a little bit larger or a little bit smaller. So to see if your uh, sauce is ready, 
just take a spoon, put it in the sauce, and if it covers it when you put your finger, it's ready and it's emulsified correctly. So uh, I think we can start plating it. Yes, just adding the final finishing quality olive oil, yes. getting that emulsified, and then turning off the heat, um, and then just checking for final seasoning before we plate. Mm -hmm. How will we plate it? So how will we plate it? Uh, so we're going for really uh, rustic uh, plating here. Uh, we have a lot of different colors in there. We have the white, we have the brown mushrooms, and we have the spinach. Uh, so creating a bed of that food. Um, and then, uh, so just a bed of the spinach, a bed of the mushrooms and the sauce. And then we're going to be placing the nudie on top of that, uh, finishing off with some freshly grated 24-month uh, Parmesan and then some lemon zest, which is really giving it a uh, freshness and a pop of citrus. Uh, so just like a lot of butter in it. So just kind of cutting through that and the fattiness of the sauce, the Parmesan, and it really uh, helps it to balance. So the lemon is the contrast. Yes, it's uh, the contrast in our finishing our dish. So, okay. should I put it here or put, uh, yep. Do you wanna? Yeah. So Joe is just gonna give it a taste quickly, uh, just a taste for the salt of our dish. Uh, if we need to add some, we'll add some now, uh, just before we begin to plate. I think, we can, I think we can put a bit of salt, salt. salt to it. How about pepper? So we're just going to finish off pepper at the end, uh, just to go over the dish and to get it. And uh, it's, just it's, to finish uh, it it's better to add salt as you go, because if you put too much, you can't take it back. So uh. Yes, definitely gradual. And you're adding it uh, throughout the cooking process. Thank you so much, Joanne. Uh, so that uh, ultimately, if you begin to add it uh, throughout at the different stages, you'll end up using less altogether, which is what you want. Uh, just good for like healthy cooking and uh, presents a better dish overall. So we're just starting to uh, kind of pool some of our uh, spinach and some of our mushrooms at the bottom here. Okay. And then we're going to be placing the nudie on top and finishing with the pepper, the olive oil, and our Parmesan and lemon. So the sauce is quite nice and emulsified. Uh, it's holding all together. It's one uh, thick sauce, which is really nice. It will help to sop up the nudie and uh, get us the final product we're looking for. As you saw, it is a very simple recipe. You don't need any special equipment. It's really nice, it's fresh. So um, if you do it at home, please tag the in at Institut Paul Bocuse so we can uh, check it out. Mm. Uh, you can replace spinach with the uh, you could a do, uh, yeah, you could remove the rib from Swiss chard. Uh, you could do quite a few different greens that are uh, complemented by being cooked. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, but spinach is really the traditional accompaniment. It works quite well, quite well because we can cook it in the sauce, whereas some of those other greens will take much longer to cook. Uh, so we are looking to uh, get something similar. So either a very small chop of the, uh, of the other greens that we're gonna to have to cook a little bit more than in the spinach. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd really recommend spinach uh, for the traditional dish, if that's what you're looking for. So I'm just grating some Parmesan cheese, and personally, I love some Parmesan cheese. So I'm just <laughs> putting a lot of it. And we're finishing off with some lemon zest, and you just wanna turn the lemon so you don't get the white part of it, so it's not bitter. Just finishing with some of that finishing quality olive oil around the side of the dish. And then Joy is gonna finish us off with the freshly cracked pepper. And that is our dish. <laughs> Et voila. Ta -da. I really like the contrast between the black plate and the, the nudie, the green of the spinach. It's, it looks very fresh 
and I can't wait to try it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, for our special Hungarian participants, please send your plate picture to the email address available uh, on the descriptions of the replay. We hope you, you all have enjoyed the moment with us and come back next week. Thank you. Uh, let's try. Thank you. To put that down. Yeah, that's Don't forget to ha sanitize your hands well. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I did. <coughs> Go ahead of me. Oh, yeah. I love the sauce. It's, it's really amazing. good. It's really light with the yeah. butter, the yeah. water, and the olive oil. I definitely recommend a bite of uh, getting some of the pasta, getting some of the mushrooms, getting it I'll all together. It. Uh, it's really, you get the experience of all of it and the freshness of the ricotta. Mm. It's so good. I already did it like four times at home. <laughs> and I just, I'm amazed by how good it is. <laughs> cool, have you tried it? I've, uh, <laughs> yes, I've cooked this dish many times at home ahead of uh, presenting it here for all of you. Um, and I, I absolutely love cooking it. Uh, it's one of my favorite simple Italian uh, kind of hearty dishes uh, to cook. Thank you, chef, for this recipe. Thank you so much, Emil, for presenting, and thank you, Cole. It was a, very, a nice, it was a pleasure working with you. Yes, as thank always. you both. Thank you both. Thank you. Absolutely a pleasure. Um, you wanna? We'll see you next week with a new team of students with a new recipe. Thank you so much. Thank you Bye. so much for tuning Bye. in. Goodbye. <laughs> uh. <laughs>